Well, Joint Chairman David Sullivan, thanks very much for giving us your time to talk to us today. Um, firstly, how would you sum up the start of West Ham United's season? I think um, it's pretty satisfactory. Um, we've had two very, very good performances and one poor performance. Um, but a lot will depend on what happens in the next couple of games. Um, because often when a team is, has a lot of new players and it's coming together, you will have some very good performances and some indifferent performances. Um, and uh, I think what's happening at long last is the home form is coming together. Um, because last year we were disappointed by the home form. The reality is now we've, we've won six home games in a row, League and Cup. We conceded just one goal in those six games, and that was a game against Hull, where we where we knew we could no longer catch Southampton. The team probably lost concentration because it became a meaningless result. So we've got six consecutive home wins. Um, we've lost one home game in 2012, so the home form is really coming together, and I, and I, I think a lot of this is due to the supporters because. From, a, from a, the last few games of last season, they really, really got behind the team and they've been quite magnificent this season. Um, some of the games last year, it was very hard for people to get motivated when we were playing Doncaster or Crystal Palace or Watford and they, ex and they were nervous, they expected walkovers. Now the supporters realise every game is a cup final, every game is a battle and they're part of our team. Um, you know, we have a, a, f a tower, a fort, outside of Upton Park and we really want to turn Upton Park into that fortress and, and six wins in a row conceding one goal we hope is the start of a fantastic season at home and a fantastic season. I think um, we've got to keep our feet on the ground, we've got to take it one game at a time. We all now would accept 17th and regard it as, as a successful season. Uh, we'd all love to finish fifth or sixth and, and get into Europe by one of the cups so um, that's the aim. It's, it's a pretty tough aim. Some may say unachievable, but at this season, you, at this, this stage of the season, that's what we've all got to look to do. The Fulham match, the, the manner of the victory and the way we totally played them off the park was, was really encouraging. I think it was very reminiscent of the Brighton game uh, near the end of last season, very reminiscent of the Cardiff game in the playoffs. You know, we're, we're starting to come together as a team and people will start to realise we've got some very, very good players. But sometimes they take time to adjust. Um, I mean, Guy de Mel was out injured all of last season. He's a very good right back. People will see that this season. Uh, Mr Taylor's a fantastic, fantastic cross of a ball as a left winger um, or a left back. He carried an injury a lot of last season. Kevin Nolan is a fantastic goal scorer. Um, you know, you, you have to see him as a different type of midfielder. He's a midfielder who can contribute 12 to 20 goals in a season. He got 17 the year Newcastle were promoted, 12 in the Premier League for Newcastle, 13 in the year we were promoted, and he's already got two goals in three games in the Premier League this season. And a midfielder who, if he chips in with 12 or 15 goals this season, is a phenomenal, phenomenal achievement, as well as being a fantastic captain. But all these boys, you know, they've, you know, they've, cut, they've had to move home, their families have had to move. It all takes time to come together. And I think a lot of that will come to fruition this season. I think we were very unlucky insofar as uh, another year, that number of points would have got us automatic promotion, five years out of six. I also think for some reason, the crowd and the team got nervous. Uh, several stages of the season and it cost us automatic promotion and I, I think the team was good enough to get automatic promotion but you know we got key injuries at vital time Winston Reid was out you know getting his jaw broken playing for New Zealand I mean they're just unlucky things it's part of football but they were unlucky um, so I think we threw away automatic promotion but if you do go up as long as you guaranteed it and we weren't guaranteed it the, the, the final is the most wonderful way to go up and I still look back, if I pick the best 10 days in my life, that would be one of those 10 days. And I know a lot of people have said to me, supporters, it's the best day of their life. And it was wonderful. Um, I think it was wonderful the fact we never scored a late goal all season that was to, to, to get us a point anywhere. Uh, 
uh, with the exception of Leeds, where they just scored a minute earlier anyway. But uh, to actually score with five minutes to go, and you think, wow, this could be it, or three minutes to go, wherever it was. So it was wonderful, and I think it, it justified it, but only just. It was a very, very tight uh, thing, but you often find in football, it is very tight. The good teams come through. How often are Man United winning the last couple of minutes? They did it again the other weekend against Southampton. Man City did it against Southampton. Man United did it against Bayern Munich in the Ch Champions League final. Uh, the great Liverpool side often won in the last minute. The great Arsenal side often won in the last minute. It's that bit of quality that the better teams have got. And we had that bit of cutting edge in the championship. Um, Mr. Vaz Tay was sensational. His impact was wonderful. And it was wonderful to see it coming back to his old self. I thought he had the most wonderful game. And, and even in the playoff final, you've got to remember Kevin Nolan hit the crossbar with a rocket five minutes before. So it wasn't just one fluke goal out of nowhere. We'd nearly scored a minute earlier. So it's that bit of quality in front of goal. The summer's been very, very difficult. We started almost from the day we were promoted to a minute to 11 on the Friday night at the end of the transfer window. Um, Mr. Ben Ayoum didn't even start till six o'clock that night. It was a player we thought would be far too expensive and unavailable, uh, but it became a deal that we could do and work for the club as the evening progressed. Um, and he, and he, he's desperately wanted to come to West Ham. I would say that to people. And without divulging the deal too much, um, you know, he, he made sacrifices to come to West Ham. And we thank him for it. And it's very nice to see in a day when, when a lot of players just seem interested in money, he was interested in playing football and very, very interested in playing football for West Ham. If you said to me that the best buy we'd made last January was Mr. Vaz Tay, we probably wouldn't have thought so at the time, but in retrospect, uh, that was the best half a million pound we probably spent in our lives. Um, so it was a fantastic buy. I mean, DR is a former captain of France. Uh, Mr. Diarme, we've outbid Wigan. I say Monsieur, Monsieur Diarme. Mr. Mr. Diarme, we outbid Wigan. We outbid several other clubs for his services. Um, Mr. Jarvis. We paid an awful lot of money for. Um, hopefully, over the coming years, he will justify that. Um, you know, we brought in some good players. Um, you know, but some will take longer than others to adapt. It is the nature of the game. So don't judge them after a month. Judge them after a season. And I would say, give them all a chance because there's some talent out there. A lot of French strikers can take up to a year to find their feet. And Mr. Mega uh, is a fantastic striker. Newcastle were buying him in January for eight or nine million pounds. But he had a little bang on his knee and failed a medical as a result of that. But it was, a, it was a, just a temporary injury. It's been scanned. There's nothing wrong with the knee at all. So we, we've got a nine million pound Newcastle target for about two thirds of the price. Um, he's a goal scorer, he's quick, but he will take a few games. The, there's no game like the English game. James Collins is, 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 a, is a seasoned professional. Again, a man who loves the area, loves Essex, loves West Ham, wanted to come home. Um, and uh, when we knew he was available, we, we put out the boat to get him. But again, he t I would say to people, he took a small financial drop to, to return home. And it, although he's from Wales, like me, regards Essex and East London as his home. And his wife's from the area and he wanted to come back. And it's amazing how many players who play for West Ham want to come back. Because it is a special club. And, and we really realise it's a special club. And I think all the supporters realise it's a special club. And we do pride the role we take in the community, what we give back to the community... I personally gave hundreds of thousands of pounds to local charities at the end of last season because as directors of the club, we, 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 have, we carry responsibility. West Ham's all about history, all about the community. And for over 100 years, we really are part of the community of East London and Essex. And, and we give back to that community. 
and that is so important to us as a board, as a club, and I think all the supporters think that's important.